Joan of Arc. The French loved her, the English burned her, and we all played her campaign in Age of Empires 2. The Hundred Years' War was quite the bloody affair. As I spammed knights upon the English, I thought to myself, there's got to be a better way. So, in this video, we'll try to answer the question, is it possible to win the Joan of Arc campaign without killing enemy units? First, let's lay down some ground rules. Simply harming units is fine, as long as they don't die. Lahir can get his sword as bloody as he likes, just as long as he doesn't actually finish anyone off with it. And while we won't kill units, destroying buildings is allowed. Property damage is covered by our insurance. But siege weapons, even when they don't have anyone pushing them, do count as kills. That siege insurance package was just a bit too expensive for us. Killing Gaia animals also doesn't count, so we're free to fight back against any wolf attacks. Monk conversions are allowed, as those count as conversions instead of kills. Even if the opponent has the heresy technology so their units die upon conversion, Lord Doubt still doesn't count that as a kill. We also will be allowed to delete units, as those aren't counted as kills, and even aren't counted as losses. And finally, enemies are allowed to kill each other. While no ocean is large enough to wash our hands of the blood of our own murders, we easily can clean up other people's killings with a quick dip in Baltic. Small disclaimer, I am using saves and loads while recording this video, mostly because I don't want to torture myself for hours while recording. Saves or no, this video will show how we can embrace pacifism while still driving the English out of France. So without further ado, let's join our Frankish heroine at the army camp near Vaucouleurs. And here we go. After collecting our soldiers, we set out on our quest and receive a bit of pertinent advice from a spearman. This question is the better part of valor. We head down the path and use our pacifist ways to turn these dire wolves into dying wolves, then look on disapprovingly as we refuse to join the acts of violence between the Franks and the English. After being unable to cross a destroyed bridge, we avoid some highwaymen and decide instead to celebrate our pacifism by killing some deer just for the fun of it. Mm. Oh, yeah. Next we come up and knock on the Burgundians' door. Being their gracious hosts they are, they come out and let us in. Here's our first example of the AI's chasing behavior. They tend to be laser focused on the unit that first attacks them, turning a blind eye to the other units that walk past them. They chase after the unit who touched the walls first, letting Jones slip right through. An archer chases us, but that's not a problem. After pacifying a few more wolves, we get on a transport ship, take the shortcut through the woods to avoid the final highwaymen, and pay a visit to the Dauphin. The Dauphin will see you now. Off to a good start. Scenario 1, with 0 units killed. Next, we travel to Orleans, but to get there, we need to walk around to avoid a Burgundian ambush. After picking up the trade carts, we can use some Gaia transport ships to avoid fighting the soldiers guarding the bridge. We'll delete these towers, just so that they don't kill anything while we're not looking. The British are destroying our towers! You must save Orleans! After delivering the supplies, we can click up to the castle age and send our villagers to start mining gold. We are surrounded on all sides by four English castles, and our objective is to destroy one of them. Being restricted to the castle age, our best weapon will be the battering ram. The northern English train swordsmen, mangonels, and longbowmen, while the southern English train knights and rams. They'll keep training more units, so we'll target the southernmost castle, as it doesn't have a stable nearby to produce units that can kill rams. After building up for a bit, we'll again use our debate skills. By using our knights to attack the walls, we get the southern English knights to focus on chasing our knights. While we keep them busy, we can break through the wall to the castle. We'll patrol a couple of cavalry back and forth to distract the towers and move in with rams. After a bit of dancing with our knights to keep the enemies distracted, we get in and take out the castle. Can it be that the French have finally learned to fight? There we are. Zero kills again. Scenario 2 requires a couple of tricks, but overall still is fairly easy. In Scenario 3, we need to take Scenario 2 and do it three times, destroying not just one, but three English castles. But thankfully, we're met by a mighty hero, Lahir. The blood on Lahir's sword is almost dry. Okay, that new voice acting is... awful. Let's try that again. The blood on Lahir's sword is almost dry. Ah, that's better. We'll head across the river and start building up a base. We need to get our economy rolling quickly, but since we don't have much time to build houses, we'll make room for villagers by deleting all of our non-cavalry units. 
That's how you know Lahir is a badass. He only gets wounded. Even if you kill him, he doesn't die. This scenario features three enemies, the English, the Burgundians, and Sir John Fustolf. There are four castles that we can destroy, and Fustolf is triggered to attack after we destroy any one of them. As long as we kill three castles within a short period of time, we won't need to worry about him. But since we'll be using rams to attack the castles, we do need to worry about keeping them alive. If we look at the AI script for the English, we see they train longbowmen, knights, and swordsmen, but we can take advantage of this since the longbowmen and the swordsmen cost less gold than do the knights. Since the English start off with a very small economy, they will put all of their gold into training their unique unit and their swordsmen, and they won't train knights until later in the game. The only place the English have barracks is near their middle castle. So, if we attack their other three castles, we only have to deal with longbowmen, which won't be able to kill the rams. But we need to be quick, as if we wait too long, then the stables will start training knights to kill the rams. And about the Burgundians? Well, they aren't scripted to attack until 15 minutes, so we have a bit of time to build up our base. Now, there's one more piece to the puzzle. We can use a sneaky little trick to get into the southeastern castle. Rams are quite large, and sometimes the game just doesn't know how to place them properly. If we build the siege workshop adjacent to the walls, then we can ungarrison the rams on the other side. Now, we just need to make sure that the English and the Burgundians don't send their infantry to kill the rams. And to do that, we once again need to debate. By attacking them, we can draw their armies towards our knights. Then we run around and around and around and around, while at the same time moving in with our rams. By getting longbowmen to attack our knights, we can get them to chase and open their gates, letting our rams through. Things get hectic quite quickly, as we need to micro in four places at once, keeping our debate force alive while simultaneously besieging three castles. But with some persistence and a little bit of luck, we're able to succeed. That's the last of them. The English will be forced to surrender the Wild Valley back to the French. Another victoire for Jean of Arc. Yeah, this army of rams ain't so quaint now, is it? Scenario 3 was definitely much tougher than the previous two, and it took quite a bit of planning. But we pulled through and still managed to get it done with zero kills. The next scenario is significantly easier. We're tasked with destroying three town centers. Once each TC is destroyed, its owner allies us, regardless of how much military they have left. So we can run in, snipe the TC, and get out. Or we don't even really have to get out, since destroying buildings seemingly is a great way to make new friends. We can avoid the river guards right at the start, and head instead directly to our base. We'll start by heading north across the river towards Green. Our scouts will distract Green's army while a nice destroy their town center. One city liberated. Shalom has been freed! We head due east to Orange and repeat. The scouts debate the army and castle fire, while Joan and our knights kill their TC. Two cities liberated. Yellow, though, has some fortifications and a much larger army, and I decided to build up a few more knights before running through to attack them. There's a problem, though, because we ignored the river guards. You see, Ensemble anticipated that we would avoid them, so there's a trigger for them to attack our base after a short timer. But once they attack that base, they just stand around and don't move anywhere. So we can run our villagers away ahead of time and just build up around the sides of the map. Green's towers aren't a threat to us anymore since we took out their TC so early. Now we just build up an army of knights and have Joan knock on the front door. Yellow comes out of the side door to attack her, opening it up for our knights to run inside. Joan runs around and distracts their army while our knights finish off the TC. Three cities liberated. Krems has been liberated! Now the coronation of the Dauphin can proceed! That scenario was a nice break, and getting zero kills was pretty straightforward. Maybe they'll just get easier from now on. Hmm, what's that next scenario again? Oh, right. Oh, no. The Siege of Paris. Probably the most difficult of all of the original campaign scenarios. There's no way to get a town center, so as a kid, I always just skipped this one. The resource sheet codes are useless and we can't get Cobra cars. But now, we have to deal with it. And oh, deal with it we shall. Recall the objectives. Rescue six villagers, then escort them and Joan to the Cyan Town on the eastern side of the map. The hints tell us to avoid the English soldiers, so we'll take that advice to the extreme. The very first thing we do, 
is to select all of our army and put them on no attack stance. We don't want them accidentally aggroing the English. Now we bring our trebs over to the western side of the map and take out the towers and castles here. Thankfully the English don't mind us and their soldiers leave us alone while we destroy these buildings from out of range. Then we bring over a few of our crossbowmen and start shooting at the gate. The nearby soldiers will chase us and eventually kill the crossbowmen. But we've achieved an important objective, getting these units out of the way. Later on, we'll need to rescue the refugees in this part of the city, so clearing these units now will let us move in later. And that's how we're going to play this scenario, careful management of the positioning of the English units to allow us to sneak past them. Next we go to the opposite side of the city. There's a keep here, so we use the scout to dodge its fire while attacking the tower once with a single crossbowman. There are three champions in the city who really really like this tower, and once the unit attacks it, the champs will stop at nothing to have their revenge. We can run the crossbowmen as far away as we like, leaving the line of sight of all of the English units even, but the champs will still chase him down. We'll just try to leave the champions somewhere out of our way for now. Next we can destroy the keep and a couple of wall pieces. There's a monk standing guard, but the Britons don't have the redemption technology necessary to convert siege. That means we can move in with our trebuchets and bombard cannons, and the bunk will just stand around there and ignore us. We'll use our trebs to clear out the keep and the walls on the eastern shore of the river too, giving us an escape route for when we make it eventually to that part of the city. There are also some refugees here. The English are neutral to us, and they won't attack the refugees until we find six of them. But since we have only four, we can run the villagers around the city to get some scouting information. Next we want to clear out the two keeps guarding the bridge, but attacking them aggroes the English troops on the bridges. To make room for our trebs, we use our pikemen and our crossbowmen to run through the city, hit the buildings, and then get the English troops to chase us towards the west. Our men eventually die, but not before getting the English out of our way. We have enough room to use our trebs now to clear out the towers. There is though one pesky longbowman who does get in the way and manages to kill our trebs, but we don't need them at this point anymore, so it's fine. Now, back to those refugees. They still can move freely about the city, so we move them to the right side of the bridge. Eventually, we'll need to cross this bridge with the rest of our army and the other refugees, but there's this pesky onager guarding it. We essentially have two options with how to deal with it. We could just try to draw its fire with some cavalry while crossing the bridge, or we could come up with a convoluted scheme to push it out of the way. So let's come up with a convoluted scheme to push it out of the way. We want to push it to the north, and to do that we need to get a unit within the siege engine's minimum range to force it backwards. That means we need to get on its southern side, but that path is blocked with some trees. But that's okay, since villagers can cut the trees. We'll just put the game on times 8 speed, control right click on the gold whenever the villagers are at their carry capacity, and eventually chop through all of the trees. Now we just need units to push the onager out of the way. Thankfully, we can sequence break a bit and use a villager to capture the Gaia units in the eastern part of the city. We'll shoot some buildings with them, aggro the English soldiers, and make them chase our army to the north side of the walls where they're out of the way, while at the same time we run our two new knights to the south for safety. Now we can use these knights to push the Maganel back and out of the way. Now that that onager is out of the way, we can move all of our army back to the western side of Paris. I accidentally had left these three English champions in the way from when they killed our crossbowmen earlier, but one cavalier is enough to lure them away. Now we can go in through the western gate peacefully thanks to all of the units we had lured away right at the start. We capture the rest of the refugees and organize a push across the bridge. We head across, trying to fire our cannons at the tower to take it out. At least two of these villagers need to survive, so we take all of our units to draw fire away from them. The king's reinforcements come, so we immediately set them to no attack stance so they don't kill anything accidentally. Eventually we push, and we get across the bridge, and we make it out of the city. Now there's just one obstacle left, the Burgundian ambush. But thankfully the Burgundians are neutral to us, so they won't attack the villagers. We can just right click Joan across the battlefield and send the villagers behind. We'll garrison them in the castle at the end for good measure, and there we are, the siege of Paris completed with zero kills. You are victorious! Holy no peasants should. are safe! I just hope Jean can make it to the castle. Now, that one took quite a bit of planning, and it all comes down to getting the English units to behave. Different versions of the game seem to have different unit behaviors, 
so the difficulty of the scenario may vary widely based on which version you're playing. Anyway, with Paris behind us, we can look ahead to our one remaining challenge. The final scenario endeavors us with planting the French flag atop an English hill. We meet up with our army, which again features La Hire. Ah, oh, La Hire's sword is not bloody enough. Even though we both deleted him and he actually died 10 years before this scenario takes place, he once again proves how awesome he is. Neither the delete key nor actual death is capable of killing him. We're supposed to assault the Burgundian base and destroy the town center to get resources, but for some reason, we start off with wood in the Definitive Edition. There's enough for us to build a lumber camp, then we can gather more for a dock and some houses. Again, we'll delete most of our army so that we don't need to build quite as many houses. It's mostly the cavalry who will be important to us again. We'll head to the far south of the map, where we can construct some transport ships. We'll load everyone up, and head on over to the English base. We'll use some units to patrol on the coast and debate the enemy warships. That lets our transport ships make it to the shore, where we make a mad dash towards the top of the hill. Checking the achievement screen, we have our objective. Zero units killed. So there we go. All of these Joan of Arc scenarios completed without killing any enemy units. That was quite the journey. Some of those scenarios were pretty easy, but the cleansing of the Lore and the Siege of Paris were quite brutal. I encourage everyone to check out some of the speedruns of these scenarios, both for the original game and in the definitive edition. You can find links to most of the videos of these missions on speedrun.com. Heck, maybe someone will be brave enough now to start trying some pacifist speedruns. There's a couple more campaigns that I think can be done without killing any enemy units, so I'll try to visit them in upcoming videos. Until then, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.